Welcome to the Choosing Happiness Podcast with me, your host, Rudrani Davy, the Happiness Lady. Well, howdy, y'all. Rudrani Davy of the Happiness Lady. That's right. I even wrote the book about it. Choosing Happiness, an uncommon way to find joy in your life. Speaks eight languages. My shameless plug is done. And now I'm going to move on to the portion of this episode that I'm very excited about. Without further ado, I want to introduce my friend and colleague, the brilliant, gorgeous, and you know, it isn't just blondes that have more fun. It's also redheads. So for those of you that are not on the YouTube, you might want to jump on over. <laughs> Miss Craig Glassier, thank you so much. I speak with a French accent because I know it turns you on. Thank you oh. so much for oh, that's Italian, actually. We're talking with an Italian accent. Italiano, is it? Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Merci beaucoup, madame. I love it. She's got it down. She likes no, French. I, I just, you know, when I when I over there, it works better. When I'm over here, I'm like, okay, can I do this? <laughs> I love it. I love but, it. I love it much rue thank you so much for having me what an exciting moment and an exciting day and the way you just popped up on my on my whatsapp going hey would you like to be on my podcast and it was like yes your body went <laughs> i can't not say yes <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't even cognitive it was like yes and then i'm like oh i wonder what she wants me to talk about <laughs> no i understand you have a new book so i would like to talk about that but before we get there i want to just very briefly say, y'all, I met this lady quite a while ago. <laughs> we were at a three-day advanced body class. It was my first advanced body class with, with uh, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness. And it was one of these things where um, we made eye contact. And then you <laughs> came up to me and you were like, hey, I'm Curry. You want to be on my podcast? It was so funny because it was just like, this lady just asked me to be on my podcast. I don't even know who she is. And I went up to your room, like, I think the same day. And I saw the ocean view because we was in Hollywood, Florida, y'all. And I went, damn, she got a nice room. Because I only chose a class like the day before. And I had to share a room with somebody like 10 blocks down the street because there was no more rooms left in the hotel. And I was like, I want to I wanna be this lady when I grow up. <laughs> you know, the room was amazing. You had champagne in a bucket. You had all these snacks out. And you had this unbelievable view and i remember asking you if i could go out on the deck before we even got started and you were so gracious but that's how we met y'all it's about 11 years ago and that was my first podcast i had another one after that first it was um actually i think a radio podcast which i was just trying to figure out how to do things like that and how to talk to people mm -hmm. and um talk to people about their money issues <laughs> that's right because yeah. you were the money lady you're still the money lady. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I mean, it's true. I mean, Curry knows she loves her money. She loves to play with money. She's not afraid of money. And I think that's maybe we talk a little bit about that because I don't know anybody that has a money problem. Do you? Oh, oh, no. Just everybody. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. What if money? What if money wasn't the problem you were? Because you know? it's like this for me. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean. I if wish more people would ask that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just say I wish more people would ask that question. What you just said. What if money is not the problem? Like, what if money's not the problem? But I am, and my thoughts about it, and my feelings about it, and my judgment about it, and God knows that I've experienced all of that as well. You know. Right. Right. Uh. This is what I tell people when I'm teaching that the the money class, how to become money workshop. Mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, what if money was your friend? Now imagine having a friend that you thought was a problem because, you know, for whatever reason, you had all of this built up of uh, ideas and anxieties about money. You never have enough of it or you it never shows up when you want it to. And, and all of a sudden, this is your friend named money and you have all these preconceived notions. Would that friend want to play with you? That would be a no, Bobette. Yes. Feel me. Feel me. So let's let's start with the money thing if you don't mind <laughs> we'll get to the book but i want to you've been like the queen of of uh, all of this you have so much ease around money why do you suppose that is well because i survived uh, enough shark attacks <laughs> actually <laughs> oh, so my. i'm serious i you know i was raised around very very wealthy people 
And so um, money doesn't impress me in the way it impresses people. I look for, do they have, actually have a heart or a soul? And what are they doing for the world? And, you know, what would they like to do? And I kind of look at people a little differently because I'm not impressed by the way they look, the way they dressed or how many yachts they have. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Whatever. Now, what are you doing today for, um, you know, we can say for consciousness or for the planet, you know, what, what do you care about? How are you giving back? How are you using your money as a tool to create a greater tomorrow for my grandchildren, <laughs> for your grandchildren, for anybody? I mean, what are we doing with our money? Are we using it to create something greater? Are you using it to expand people's lives and, and, and to allow other people to see that it's a great tool? It is not an end or a result. It is a great tool that I encourage and hope that everybody would enjoy it a little more. Mm -hmm. And I love your example about the, the friend, because if you look at money as a friend, then you have to look at your relationship with money. True story. True story. See, I, I had the opposite growing up. I had a, I had two parents that were always fighting about the money situation. It was an arranged marriage. My dad was 35. My mother was 18. I'm glad uh, she was eight. For a minute, I thought you were going to say she was eight. I was like, wait, what year was this? <laughs> that would have really been a whole different childhood if that had been the thing. Uh, yeah. And I've heard of things like that, but not as young as 18. I think as young as 12 or 13, but we're talking yeah, about prairie, prairie times. And uh, yeah, we went into a whole yeah. other realm over here, folks. Sorry, sorry. I just, that was a little side. Appalachia, sidebar. Appalachia. They married him off very young. And I I'm, I'm yeah. grew up very close to the Appalachians. Oh, no. Man. Hate hey. mail from the Appalachian people, please. I'm not, you know, saying it's a bad or a good thing. It was a time in history when it made sense because you had farms. But and 18, you needed a wife and you 18, needed children. 18 is beautiful. 18 is beautiful. No issue. No so, issue. My mama was young. Her parents wanted their, both my parents are Italian, 100%. I don't know if you knew that. And my, um, my mother's parents wanted to spend half of their year in the U S and you could spend at that time three months and then take three months, go back. And da, 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 da. So I grew up with my mom's grandparents living with us that they didn't really speak very good English. Right. But mm -hmm. um, that's where I learned my Italian. So the thing is my dad's parents came over on the boat. So he was bilingual, you know, and um, anyway, all the things, but here was the thing. My dad was from a very poor family mm. and my mom, my mom's father was a very famous conductor. So lots of money is to yell. So when they were there, I felt like, Oh, you know, money wasn't even an issue. We would celebrate. We would do all these things, you know, um, for me, it was more about music. He gave me my first violin when I was three and by four, I was a virtuoso and Wow. all the stuff and I got to travel around the world and play in all these places and I didn't know that costed money but then those three months they were gone my parents would be fighting because my father didn't like them staying and you know here they're just staying with us and it's this and that and they're teaching our children that money money's the root of all evil and they make it look like it, it was just just and so my parents would fight about it and I was like I am so conflicted I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about money, but I never had the thought that I couldn't have it. And, and so thing that's a real blessing because I would say most of the people that I worked with and over the many years that I facilitated uh, the right riches for you classes, um, many people had no idea what it was like to have money mm -hmm. unless they worked really, 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 really hard and got a promotion. And they never had that sense of joy that you just explained to me when you got the violin and you got to play and you got to travel and you didn't have to think about the money. Not at all. That was all taken care of. I didn't know I was actually making money on top of that. That money actually went into an account for me later that collected interest. So here I was already Beautiful. having money. Yeah. Having and, money, having money. And being Re willing to have it. And receiving because you were, you were acknowledged and you were told, that it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's so important what our parents tell us. 
Sure. I have one telling you one thing and one telling you the other thing, though. Yeah, and yeah. then you have those 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 points of view about him and her and them and, and and all those are addressed as you know in the money classes and and that's what makes it fun because you get to if you'd like to undo your stuck points of view about money and your parents and how they positively or negatively affected you mm -hmm. and that's the really cool part about those classes i mean and, and and all of access is you have a choice you can choose something different like happiness yes. <laughs> yeah like happiness i mean that's the thing. People do, do not know that they can actually have a, have a choice or make a choice. Yeah, you know, and, and, and parents will, you know, true. they're just going to be themselves. My mom always told me, my mama, she said, you know, you should invest in jewelry because if something goes wrong, you can always sell your jewelry. And, but I, but she also loved really beautiful things. And so she taught me at a very early age to appreciate the fun of things in life, like diamond and gold bracelets and, you know, w w whatever. So awesome. I, it, I know, but I, I would have people that would really judge me at a very <laughs> young age for having such beautiful and, and clothes. I liked dressing. My mother was an aristocrat. Was I talk about, she, she's still around y'all. She, she 90, she's going to be 91 this year, but she's still, dre we dress every day. I mean, we dress all the way down to the shoes. You know, even during COVID, we did. It was just this thing where, hey, we ain't got nothing else better to do. I would sometimes, Curry, go into the closet and go, okay, this ring wants to be weird, wants to be worn. Who wants to come play with this ring today? And I go around the closet and go, hmm, you, you, oh, you. And that's kind mm -hmm. of, I don't know if you, do you do that? <laughs> Am I yeah, weird? I actually do do that. And I actually did that before this podcast and this Zoom and anything I do. I ask, okay. Because there's an energy that clothes have, and energy has a voice if you can quiet enough to listen. Oh, speak more about that, please, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what does she mean by that, that the clothes got an energy? It just closed. <laughs> so please every, everything, that. you know, everything has an energy. Everything has a voice. You just have to quiet your mind and, and practice listening to what they're saying you know, and, and the wonderful thing about jewelry and beautiful clothes is that, and I encourage your audience to just try on, go into a store and try on some beautiful clothes. Even if you can't afford it that day, go in and see what it's like to try on something you've always dreamed of having. Right. Yeah. Just give yourself that chance. Oh my God. And then, and then look at what I used to tell, um, the clients that I had and in my classes. So what if, and this is just sort of an exercise. What if you find the store that you love the clothes, say it's, you know, Chanel, my mother loves Chanel, say it's mm -hmm. Chanel and you know how expensive those clothes are. Yeah, for some stuff. reason, for some reason, the manager says, Rudrani, you can put anything in this shop on layaway and take as long as you want. What would you like to have? Hmm. Wow. So if money wasn't the problem, what would you choose? Then you'd have to choose. You couldn't complain that you can't choose. And it brings you out of victim mode. Yeah. It's a true story. Wow. That's interesting. We have a play. We have something called UAL here uh -huh. it's year before styles. And so I have some Chanel, but I uh -huh. paid only 20% of the original cost. Well, thank goodness. That's super cool. That's nice. And I, I don't know if you knew this. I'm a, I'm a professional dresser. Oh, I help I, people buy I, clothes I, and I, jewelry. And well, and I work one day a week in a jewelry store just because I love helping, especially, I especially love helping people buy wedding rings because <laughs> it's so cool. new to them. The diamond is so rare. The relationship is supposed to be so rare. There's this beauty about you know, this one big purchase they're going to make. And it's like buying a house or a car or anything. Right? Very much so. Very so, much so. So much, so much fun. Um, and so, I mean, they can't even pay me what I can make with one client, you know, in a month. Okay. One client, I can make enough to what I would make there in a month working there four half days a week. But it's, it brings me so much joy. And I love working with people, you know, I, I kind of really 
didn't like people. I had to finally decide. I had to finally acknowledge that piece. But I do want to tell you a story, though. Okay. When I was 16, because it lends into this, when I was 16 years old, I was with a friend of mine and we were doing a little road trip. I'm not even sure. I think we were going to the mountains or something. And she's a year older. And so um, we ended up going to this car dealership because, I don't know, we saw the sign. It said, test drive a Ferrari today. <laughs> and I went, oh, wow. What's a Ferrari? And she goes, oh, it's like the most expensive car on the planet. So we pulled into the dealership. And I went, oh, my goddess, I'm in love with this car. <laughs> I like nice cars, you guys. If you know me, I mean, I'm on my second Mercedes. I've had Audis. I've I've had them all. I love, I had convertible Porsche. I like nice rides. I don't know where that came from. I don't, it's definitely not a dad thing. My mom, <laughs> you know, has a Buick. It's Maybe not, it's a real funny thing. Maybe it's a real funny thing. All right. I'm not going to apologize. Let's drive a Ferrari today. So we walk in. 16, y'all. 16. Wow. 10, 17. And I said, so can I test drive a Ferrari today? <laughs> and I was like, do you well, have a license? <laughs> do, you have, do you have a driver's license? I said, I do. And he goes, well, you can. You have to give me your driver's license. We'll keep it in the office. I have to ride in the back. And um, is it you and your friend? Yes. Yeah, so, so he rode in the back. My friend is shotgun. I am behind the wheel. So great. Red, Ferrari, tan leather interior. It's like it was yesterday in my head. Wow. You know, top down. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps well, just perceiving your your experience. That's so awesome. I didn't know I couldn't choose it. I didn't know I couldn't ask. So there we are. We're driving. He, you know, he doesn't want to go on the interstate. I am 16. Ooh. Then I said, you know, would you like some French fries? <laughs> I know how much you love the French. And he said, well, I think I would like some French fries. So there's a McDonald's right over here. Why don't we go through the drive-through in this fabulous Ferrari and I'll I'll buy you some French fries. So I got us some biggie French fries and some shakes, you know, whatever. And we had our fries and our shakes. And I went back to the dealership and it was fabulous. But he knew I couldn't buy this car. And I just said, you know, dude. You're so cool because you just, I just asked and you delivered. And I don't know if I said delivered, probably not. I said, this meant the world to me. And we didn't have iPhones. I would have taken a picture of it. I didn't have a camera with me or anything, but it's here forever. Forever. And, it, and, it, and it's, it's here so inside cool. forever. What, it's baby? here forever. Cool. You don't need a camera. And you could, you could write a, a small little blog about that, Rudrani, and you could call it, French fries and a Ferrari. <laughs> Girlfriend, that is so what, good. What a great story of empowerment and encouragement for someone. I mean, like, and I've forgotten about this story, but my friend, um, we're friends on Facebook, and, and I don't remember. We connected for a moment. She goes, do you remember that time that you test drove that Ferrari and we ate fries? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that did happen. I'm not imagining it. That actually really happened. I made yes. that happen at 16. Yes, yes you yes. made that happen. And you, that's, and, and the energy of you being in that Ferrari, you and the Ferrari, Ferrari, if I can say Ferrari. it. Ferrari. You and the Ferrari, there was an energetic connection there. Mm. And that wonderful man, he was a facilitator to allow you to have that. Yeah, I, d I don't remember his name. I don't remember what he looked like at all. It didn't matter. It was just like, dude, you're so cool. I'm buying you fries. <laughs> and that also, may I add, I would see that as you, and I would see that as generosity of spirit, hmm. that, that he gifted you and you received and you gifted him back and he received. There was a simultaneity of gifting and receiving, which is generosity of spirit, like at its best. Mm -hmm. And that was such a beautiful thing. And I'm sure he never forgot you either. You know, it's funny because I had a paper route. That's the only reason why I had money. I didn't have no credit cards or nothing. But I did go to college right after this road trip because I, I, I'm a genius. <laughs> so I, I, I know on paper, 
I and, love so, and so I graduated a year and skipped a grade and went, went to school at 16. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I didn't have no credit cards, not until I graduated and moved to Nashville. And uh, my first job um, afforded me to get, if you can believe it, a gold American express. And I've had that gold American express ever since. And so there was another thing and I have a platinum one, but it's like this interesting thing where again, I didn't know I couldn't. And I think that's the thing with money. People don't know it doesn't have to be hard. They think they can't and therefore they can't. That's their point of view. Mm -hmm. And your point of view creates your reality, y'all. You heard me say it a million times already. Indeed, indeed. indeed it does. Huh. So I would love to know, have you, because you've taught a lot of these money classes. Mm. Really cool, and I know you know what I'm saying here. It's really cool when somebody actually really gets it, mm. and you you can see that you just flip the switch for them, like they now can actually choose because they know they can. Do you have a story or anything behind that that you had this moment? Because I know for me, it was like I, I I had a lot of classes online during COVID with India and with Taiwan and a lot of places that had lots of points of view about. Uh, money and how you had to, or how it had to be hard. And you had to work hard and you worked the same job and you got your gold watch that wasn't even made out of gold. I mean, it's gold colored. And I mean, I have three gold watches and, and one of them is 18 carat with diamonds and the other two are 14 carat. You know, do you have a story? Oh my gosh. That's I put you on the spot, y'all did. I just did. You did. You put me on the spot because mostly I have a lot of CRS and that was, you know, <laughs> I can't I remember have, shit is what she means by yeah. CRS, y'all. I've done so many classes and I've been fortunate. Well, okay, so I'll tell you an interesting so the one that there's three of them that popped up right away and I was like, is that really gonna be for your audience for this? Well, people will, you know, I'm asking in my head, is this something that your audience can hear? And immediately I'm thinking about the couple that came to one of my Right Riches for You weekends. Okay. And I encouraged them to openly speak about what bothered them about their finances, what bothered them about, you know, their checking account, what bothered them about their spending and come the next, you know, after we had the first day and then to come the next day and, and talk about it, you know, after class and then come the next day and see, you know, how they feel about it. I mean, it was two, it was two or three days. It was in Canada. It was a long, long time ago when I first started out, I think it might've been 2009 or 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, nice. it, the whole, the whole class was about money and your points of view and your mother's points of view. And do you actually need to keep, you know, buying her point of view or would you like to give it back to her? That would be <laughs> right. Uh, you, you know, it doesn't hurt to give back a point of view because you can give it back with consciousness attached. And so um, they came in and I was never so th this this surprised me and I just adored it. And they said, we have kind of an interesting thing to talk about. And I said, there is the open, open book. You can say whatever you like. And they said, well, you know, we really enjoyed talking. We took a look at our finances. And the next thing you know, we were having great sex <laughs> and we haven't had great sex in, I hate to say it in a while. And they were oh like much, we totally connected in a different way. And like they created more intimacy between them mm. and said our sex life is better now that we have sort of money is out of the box. We're talking about this hidden stuff, these agendas, these, you know, assumptions, conclusions, all this crap that we do. Sure. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I just love that. So that was one of my happiest, happiest things ever. You know, there was there... love is they were so vulnerable and willing to tell this in a class. Right. Yeah. It, it was so great. It was so great. And that will stay as one of, I will never forget that. And I, you know, for me, sometimes people don't tell you about how you affect or infect their life, but that <laughs> one I go, oh, okay. I, I, that really, you know, this class did a good job for this couple. That's so cool. That is so cool. And they were actually willing, because here's the thing. I remember, um, I remember Simone telling a story once where she, her partner at the time, 
um, they weren't talking about money and she was the money maker and he was not necessarily. I mean, he right. was a tradie. Right. He had a kid and right. a dog and, you know, he was doing everything he could to contribute to the relationship. So as a tradie and in Australia, that means somebody who's very good with the hands with the woodworks. And so he was taking care of the house. And he a few also- other things I might add. What now? And a few other things I might add. Yes. Well, he was a very good <laughs> cook and evidently very good in a bed. And, okay. and so good with his hands, good with his hands. Yeah. Hands in a lot of ways. Because you got to be good with your hands if you're a cook, a tradie, and a lover. Yep. So yep. Yep. She gave him the gift of, hey, you know what? Quit your job. Figure out what you want. Hang. I'll just pay the bills for a while. And it wasn't that he wasn't contributing. He was just contributing in other ways. They were making her money because it freed her up. You know, she didn't have to deal with all the other stuff. And I just remember her, you know, saying, you know, sometimes it's got to be contribution doesn't always have to be zeros and ones. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know, I mean, there was literally a time where I was dating a guy. Gary had been telling me that I, you know, I was, I was wanting some sex but I didn't want to have a big commitment. And I'm like, Gary, I don't know what to do, man. Everybody wants, I mean, I thought it was just the women's that wanted to get married and all the things I said, but I'm at an age now where I'm finding that these guys online are looking for somebody to take care of them until they die. And I don't want that. You know, he goes, totally get it. He goes, you need to get on the dating sites. And the problem is, is you need three different men. You need, you need the honeydew. You need the one that's wildly good in bed. And you need the one, you know, the honeydew is the one that wants to stay home and watch TV and cuddle and all this stuff and, you know, cook for you and all that. He goes, and you need the one that's going to take you out and wine and dine you. He goes, you need three men. I'm like, (laughs) what are you talking about? I need three men. So I got on a date in sites, you know, and I'm like doing what he told me. So so finally I talked to him, get a little update, you know, and I'm like, he goes, how's it going? I said, well, it's very rare, rare that I swipe right. Because he was like, will it be easy? Will you it know, be fun? Will I learn something? I learned something. Will, will I, be, I happy? be happier afterwards? <laughs> and then I had this one. Will he make me money? Because oh, to me, money is always a contribution. Yeah. So will he make me I money? I finally found this one guy. I ended up actually having three boyfriends at the same time. But I found this one that I saw several times and I would never swipe right. It was never light, but he kept popping up in the feed. If you've ever done dating sites, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know? And uh, before COVID and after COVID, it's not yet been light for me to go there and that's okay. But I basically saw this guy again, you know, he's got glasses. He's got a cowboy hat and a couple of pictures. And I'm like, you know, I, I wouldn't meet eyes across the room, but for some reason I'm getting yes on this guy. And it turns out, that he, you know, he's a swanger. He got his girlfriend that lives with him three days a week. And they agreed that they could each have two other partners if they want. But they were very, very safety, safety. You had to get your blood tested, all the stuff. You had to, you know, I was like, well, this is very interesting. Why is this guy testing? And it, 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 and it turned out great because he wasn't interested in the serious thing either. And that became the energy of contribution I went to his house first and he cooked dinner. I was like, he's got a very dusty house. I, 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 this doesn't work for me. <laughs> so it turned out that he would, you know, uh, he would take me out, wine me and dine me. We'd go back to my house. I'd be his hooker and he'd leave. It was perfect. Perfect. You'd be his hooker. <laughs> and then he'd leave. Yeah. Or mistress. <laughs> mistress. Yeah, you know. it's. I, I'm thinking of, of the song. Um, uh, gosh. I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head, but, you know, um, Hookers, hookers, you received money for it. So you weren't his hooker. You were just like his fun bunny. I was his fun bunny, but she does have this song called I'll Be Your Hooker. Hi. So that's why. Hooker. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, I think I just digressed seriously. <laughs> we're leaving the channel now. Please come back. We do have to take a station identification break because I got to pay the bills. <laughs> for my sponsor mandu m-a-n-d-u-u it is not a hair salon for men i thought it was <laughs> and then i walked in i went what the heck is going on here and i got to watch these two people doing the electrocution workout that's right they hate it when i call it that 
but that's how I sees it. They put you in a suit. It looked like, you know, you're wearing some kind of robot suit and it's got all these tens units in it. You work out for 15 minutes and your body think you worked out for two and a half hours. It worked muscles you don't even knew you had. In very little places, you know, all the stuff. So just a one minute commercial, y'all, and we'll be back. Can Do is a boutique fitness studio concept. And we are actually the first FDA clear EMS training uh, workout. And what we do essentially is that we will have a client come in uh, we will hook them up to a whole body EMS suit, and then we perform a workout on a medical grade device called an eFit device. And that device will send an electrical current to their body through electrodes in these suits that we put on them. And this electrical current is just basically stimulating the electrical current that you already have inside your body. So everybody is made up of electrical impulses. It's what helps you walk, helps you move. We're tapping into that and making it uh, stimulate it more to where we can cause a muscle to actually contract involuntarily. So we can actually create resistance without adding a load to the body. So that is why we, as you see online, it always says ultra low impact. It is scientifically proven. It is absolutely ultra low impact. We're back. Oh my goodness. What'd you think about that? Y'all need to find the man do it's at a lot of different places, not just in the U S all over the world. I, I believe it started somewhere in Germany or something, but we got three within, within 30 minutes of me. So how lucky am I? There's one in Houston, by the way, Kerr, if you want to, you know, pump That's up the cool. volume. That's pretty cool. I, I was actually, I'd heard you talk about that before. And my son many, many years ago, when he went over to play soccer in Germany for um, a month, they actually put him in one of those suits. So oh, it's really okay. like come from Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it was kind of cool. So it's, guys like it. Guys like it. So. Guys like it. I like it. I'll tell you why. Within three minutes, it's like my endorphins kick in and I sing along to all these songs. They let me. They're so kind. Of course, you know, I'm paying. Well, I'm not paying them. Actually, they're paying me now. <laughs> but it's so cool. I enjoy it so very much. And you guys, if you decide to do it, please tell them that Rudrani Davies sent you the happiness lady. Because, you know. Good idea. If, you know, I want them to know that I'm loving on them. All the things. So, Miss Curry. Yes. We touched on this for just a moment in the very beginning. And I do not want to disappoint my listeners. You got this new book. I do. I do. And it can is. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, of course I can. And I was, I was going to read a session, but it's called Fierce Dignity. Amelia, yeah, yeah, fierce dignity. She's behind you. And she is behind me. That is exactly right. It is based on my uh, cousin and her life and her untimely early death. And it's a fiction based on some of the things that I've learned about her life. And um, I can, I, I was going to read something from it because it's it's a very interesting take on heritage and family and wow. what because she was married um, to an aristocratic family married off to an aristocratic family in Scotland. This is so interesting. All this is feeding together. And I didn't even have this conversation with you before because you yeah. know, my mom's an aristocrat, all the things we have coat of arms for both sides of my family. It's crazy. Oh, wow. anyway, well, please. I, I don't have that, but um, so the, do I read the, I, I wanted to read the back is really, you know, you can find the back, but I was going to read the prologue, which Please. I think is, I think I want to read both, but it's, it's real short. It's real short. And the book is short. It didn't take you two days to read. It's really, really right. short. Um, so I start out and I say, oh, I, I quote Walter Scott, who I love. Yes. Oh, what tangled web we weave when yes. first we practice to deceive. So have you ever walked into a room or a place and sensed it? that presence, that sudden shiver, you feel run up your spine that prickles on the back of your neck, that undeniable sense that someone is standing behind you. Do you feel it? Is it there now? Don't be alarmed. This is not a tale of terror. I know, disappointing for some of you and a relief to others. <laughs> Although I do hope it gives you an occasional chill. In fact, there are whispers of the past all around us. Some call them ghosts, other spirits or entities, and some more scientifically minded 
call them energetic disturbances. Let's look at the latter for a moment. If energy remains eternal and merely changes forms, perhaps this is what we are haunted by, latent fingerprints from a bygone era. This idea may be much more scientific and thereby a more comforting thought. However, how do we explain when those residual energies begin to speak to us by name? Or when they start to move objects about or create happenings that we thought only occurred in fiction? Our story explores a world of the unknown, a deep dive into the mists of time, challenging the ideas that time is defined, that the past is fixed, and that only the brief, present, and possible futures are changeable. Perhaps thanks to our spirit friends and a particular fuzzy-haired scientist, we can truly discover that time is not linear at all. Mm. So, dear reader, this is where our story begins, with the question of what is real and what is reality. Yes, my dear friends, this is a book told by ghosts. I love this. So much. You gave me so many chills. It's <laughs> so, like, I mean. Girl, so let me, let me just read that because her in the book, her name is Amelia Talbot. So it says, Amelia Talbot took her last breath and thought that this was the end. And yet, moments later, she wakes to find she is caught between the living and the dead and that her adventure is just beginning. Yeah. And Amelia is your relative. Well, her name is Joan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I called her Amelia because you can't, I mean, this is a fiction. And so, right. you know, I do have a dedication page and I have uh, a little uh, photograph that I have, a, like, I have a little dedication page in here. And you see, it's the same photograph that I have behind me. I love it. And so I did, I dedicated the book to Joan Glassell Campbell, whose presence and kindness and story has been such a contribution to my life and your fierce dignity continues to inspire me. Beautiful. Wow. So it's a story of her and it's a, it's a fiction, you know, based on, you know, some different facts that I found. And there's some other books that were written about her and from the portrait, because there was a letter um, in her handwriting on the back of the portrait when I got it after my dad passed. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Do you talk to her at all or is it just from notes yeah. and pieces? Oh, together? oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was very contributory in the writing of the book. What would you like to tell us now? Hmm. <laughs> Go, well, you around? Is that, yeah, she's around. She's of course she's around. She's like, I would love for you to read it and experience, you know what I'd like to share with people. It's, it's inspirational and it's, um, it can contribute to people who are scared of death. Mm. Wow. So, because nobody's scared of death. Oh, right. <laughs> what, what do you know about that? Can you share just a piece of that? Cause you know, here's, here's what I am. Cause I've died as you know. I mean, when I was in India, I was shot by terrorists. Y'all know some of my story. And I went in and out of my body so many times. And it really actually was a gift because of what came after this connection with being able to be in both this other realm and be in this physical plane that we call Earth, you know. Because this isn't the only physical plane and you don't actually have to have the body to visit all the other realms. And there are quite a few, this is my experience. I mean, I do remote sessions on people and I, you know, I keep one toe in this body, but I also know that it's limitless out there. And so death is just, it's just giving up the suit in this reality. That's what I know, uh, which I almost did. Like, well, when, Rude Ronnie, I think that you have a lot more to say about that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to go into that. I would love to talk to you more about that at another time. Oh. Maybe if you consider reading the book, we could talk about, we could talk about more of this stuff, but um, I would love to do that. Yeah. I just wanted, there was a piece that, that uh, Joan mm. was 
if you could share just a piece where she's saying, don't be fearful of death. It's, 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 it's just kind of like, you know, getting rid of the suit. Nothing <laughs> else to say it. Well, it was, I would say really what she found is she wasn't, she found she was less alone in death than she was in life. Oh my goodness. But I mean, being alone, isn't that just a construct also? I'll leave it at that. Alone? I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. It's so funny because I, this leads me to something else. Because when I moved my mom in, I mean, we had this agreement, okay? I gutted my home, moved into an apartment that was a mile and a half run from my house. So I could check on the Mexicans and make sure they're still working on my house yeah. every other day. <laughs> and I love the Mexicans because they work very hard, you know? Always I, have to check on contractors. It's just the way it is. You just must. It's just the way it is. I love the guys that did my hardscape. That guy. That's a whole other podcast. I should probably have him on the podcast. Anyway, the so podcast. amazing. That's he found so many things wrong with what my contractor did with a house that he fixed that would have been really expensive if I hadn't have decided to do a hardscape and hire this guy. Right. He was so honest and would show up on weekends, would do whatever I asked because I'm a weirdo of magnitude. I travel a lot. And he just kept right on up with it and all the, awesome. all the things. Was that, your honey, was that your honey do guy? Oh, no, no. My honey do guy is actually my, my, um, my, uh, maintenance man that I text. I'm like, uh, the toilet's backed up and we <laughs> tried the plunger and that's not working. This guy, okay. This guy came along because I decided I wanted a pool. Ah, okay. And I had to go through HOA to get a pool. Yeah. And right. I had to get signatures from all my neighbors. Oh boy. And then I had to get an architect landscape to draw up the plans to get a pool. And I went three right. times in front of the board before they finally said yes. And then I went, oh, you know, I travel a lot. How is my 90 year old mom going to keep up with a pool? Mm -mm. What am I doing? Yeah. And initially it made sense because, you know, we were trapped here, couldn't go anywhere. Right. And a make good, it good way to exercise. Good way to exercise. Absolutely. I was going to have a custom made into a little kidney bean with stuff uh -huh. around it and all the things. And my family was visiting because, you know, they'd have to drive, but I wanted something to keep them busy besides watching, you know, the Disney Channel Neat and Bon Bons. I thought, okay, right. cool. help with it. Well, by the time it got approved, including the sunroom, the sunroom was like, what? it took so long because, oh my God, I say we're short on glass, which. Oh, wow. Right. Because my sunrooms are made out of glass. Yeah. During so COVID, took, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it took yeah. us two years just to get that part done. Things wow. are starting to open up and I'm starting to travel again. I'm like, hold on, make no sense. But the guy that was going to do the hardscape for the pool, I'm now going, hey, you know what? I'm I'm not going to do the pool, but I need I need the hardscape anyway. So when he finally you know, we decide we're, we're scrapping the pool. And he starts going there. He sees all these mistakes that my contractor had made. I mean, literally had put accordion uh, tubes underneath from the water through the ground where animals were eating through it and things were growing through it because he didn't use the heavy PVC. And so at first he did the first two without even telling me, fixed it. But as he kept going, he was, I got to charge this lady because I can't afford to replace all this. Right. By yourself. <laughs> this guy is, which. If I had decided to build a pool, I would have never found this guy. Exactly. Every 10 That's seconds, right? Funny. So it yes. turns out that it has to be um, 15 of these PVC pipes. Or I would have had a terrible problem later with my house in the backyard. Water, you know, uh, pooling and all this stuff. And it was going to cost me an extra 45000 cash. Okay? Fortunately for oh, me, I had But oh, yeah. still, I I understand. I, I was like, dude, I don't know what I'd do without you. You just saved me probably, I don't know, more than forty five thousand dollars worth of fixes. Because the same contractor also did two by two wood between the fixture that I built for my mom, which was private with a soundproof music studio and her bedroom and all this stuff, and the main part that we share. I wanted it bricked and the guy left without finishing the job because he didn't have anything for the brick to stick to. 
And he's like showing me, this is only a two by, not even two by four, the first big windstorm. And we have tornadoes would have knocked down this whole glass partition between the two pieces. So, you know, that's the thing also. That's the thing also about following the energy. Yep. All Asking, this- following the energy and coming out of conclusion, <laughs> which is super right? important. Super important. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So when we're reading the book and then you're going to have to be a repeat offender, evidently. Yep. Evidently. Because also I have a, a tug that I need to handle something in a few okay. minutes. Well, this yeah. is it then, y'all. That's it. The girl leaving us now because she got things she got to do. Place <laughs> go to, go to my website. website. Go to my website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before you go, though, this is called the Choosing Happiness Podcast, y'all. Yes. So yes. I'm sure that my readers, readers, well, listeners, listeners, the things, I got to ask you the question, you know, for okay. you, what yep. do you do for you to get your happy on? So what I do is I changed my mindset. And I also wear a little, a bracelet. I got a bracelet that says, don't be a little bitch. (laughs) Remember how lucky I am. I come up with several things that I'm grateful for. I mean, this is in like the the, the bad times, right? I mean, in general, I'm like really excited. But sometimes when I see so many unhappy people around me, I tend to kind of go into the quagmire of it. And then I go, wait a minute, this is not mine. (sighs) And I, I put on, I put on, um, I'll put on one of Dane's ESCs or I will read something or I will do something. I will get out and take a walk. I will move my body and I will remind myself that I'm actually happy. The people yes. around me may not be happy, but I'm actually happy. And I'm grateful to be alive. And what am I grateful for? And I really look at what I'm grateful for and I focus on that. And that makes me get my happy again that's what i do in the morning i get my hot tub and i meditate and i'm like okay who or what am i going to be today and what glorious and grand adventure can i get into mm-hmm. and you know it's also my entity time <laughs> it's like the time that you know uh, office hours okay who wants to talk yep. to me it's usually olivia newton john and my cat that i had to put down recently she's been coming oh, to me. Oh, and good. um yeah, I miss her so much. I'm now sleeping with a stuffed cat. Now I know how people end up with stuffed things in their bed. It's okay. Don't judge, please. Um, so we're going to make sure to put all the places and spaces where people can find you in the show notes. Oh, Do you have anything sure. coming up recently? And of course, the link for the book that we will follow up on. But is, is there anything that is there anything you've got coming up that you want to share? Or um, Wow. Um, (laughs) well, lots of stuff. I actually am doing something kind of interesting. I am teaching business etiquette classes at a friend of mine's real estate brokerage firm. I love that. And I'm also offering consultations in that. If you would like a private consult. That's beautiful. Maybe I need one. I don't know how, (laughs) well, no, I I think I got it covered. I just see whatever come out of of this pie hole, you know, it's a problem, but that's okay. All right, so we'll have all the deets <laughs> in the show notes for y'all, so you can find the fabulous Carrie. We will have her back because we got to now. I'm, now I got to read the book, <laughs> all the things. And if you liked, if you liked this conversation, you know, please subscribe so you'll know whenever a new episode drops. Hey, maybe you know someone that could really use this conversation. Share with them. You know, generosity of spirit, y'all. Some people are struggling. Give them a little handy hand. Help them out. So thanks again, Curry. Appreciate you so much. Thank you, Rue, for having me. What Absolutely. A gift. Mm. Until next time, y'all. Ciao, ciao for now. Bye. Thank you so much for choosing happiness. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, share, and give us a like. And if you want more happy, subscribe to the Choosing Happiness membership where you can play directly with me, Rudrani Davy, the happiness lady. How does it get any better than that?